Hey, everybody, guess what? Uh, we have two gentlemen. We have Steve and Bill, and of course, we all know Lou Vaccarelli. Uh, we're going to be talking about model trains. Welcome to the show. How are you? Very well. It's Very glad, glad to be here. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> First off, uh, they have showcases every so often, a few times a year, and Christmas time, my grandkids are up, and I went, what to do on Long Island? And I saw this train. So I said, okay, let me go take a visit take the kids and we can't find the place first off then we find an alley i thought i was heading to a speakeasy uh -oh. okay went around the back past the trucks and there's the door I knocked on the door they open the door and i go wow <laughs> I, said, I said unbelievable i said this is quite i'm awesome it was really awesome so i wanted them to tell you what they actually have so one of the questions i had asked them before we went on was, you know, how many sets can you run at the same time? I'm thinking like two, three, you know, how do you do that? How many sets can you run at the same time? <laughs> we can run 10, uh, ten trains, right. uh, two to four subways. We have a logging line. We have uh, the Sopranos layout from the TV show. And uh, it really is a fun place to be. So Steve, how did this start? How did this, uh, it's called TMB. Right. TMB, it, it started as a, just a group of train enthusiasts who got together in 1994. We started the, uh, the club at that point. Uh, Bill and I joined two and three years after that. And we've grown from the original six to 84 members right now, all really? with the same O-Gage model train interest. Mm -hmm. So oh, you said O-Gage? O-Gage. O-Gage. Okay, o -gauge. so now explain to our audience, what is the O-Gage? O-Gage is, the gauge really represents the, the, the gap between the rails where the wheels would go on. But this is, the, this is a typical Lionel train example. Um, it's not pristine, out of the box. I like them weathered, so uh, more realistic looking. But people have a lot of creativity around it. But... I've been in a hobby, uh, geez, I got my first train set at, uh, in 1961 for Christmas, still mm -hmm. have it. and uh, You still have it? Still runs. Uh, the Lionel trains are very durable and, uh, and the collector's value is, is still there to, to some extent, but the new technology that you see when we have our open house with the smoke and the whistles and the sounds, uh, digital technology is just taking the whole hobby mm -hmm. and, and the product into a whole nother stratosphere. Now, have either of you worked actually on a train? Did either of you work for the Long Island Railroad or the MTA or any of the 84 members at all? No, my, my grandpa grandfather uh, worked for the railroad and uh, I have uh, three uncles and uh, three cousins that worked for the railroad. No working experience, but I had 35 years of commuting on the railroad from Hicksville to Penn Station. But <laughs> That's like this one. Were you in the same car as this guy? So, Lou, uh, what were some of your original thoughts? You, you walked in and you were like, wow. What oh, was it that was well, so impressive? Well, I mean, now that I know there's 10 trains, I mean, what do you have, like an air traffic controller up on the top? I know you took me, Bill took us up to the upper level, but we weren't able to get behind the computer screens I saw. Yeah, that was during a, uh, an open house session. Right. So we had people running, and we have two people running on the same track. So they have to really concentrate on what they're doing, or you could run into somebody's else, somebody else's train. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's, it's definitely an incredible view from up there. And we have a, a very broad depth of talent in the club, uh, from electricians to carpenters to artists, uh, all walks of life, all, all uh, occupations, but the, the layout is really run on a high technical level. It's run from a command center in our uh, second floor control center, where like in the subway system, you could track your trains as they're moving with, uh, as they, they generate LED lighting, as well as the new command systems by Lionel and another Mike's train house. Uh, so we could run both remote. I like it's that. really added a whole other fascinating element to the hobby. Now, when I was there, I noticed out back there was a van. Now, you also take this on the road. We have a modular layout, and we go to, uh, we've been to hospitals, we've been to schools for special needs, uh, we've been to nursing homes, and we do street fairs, and we do other public uh, uh, events. We like to get out to the public, because if you go to train shows and, and run trains, you're preaching to the choir. Mm. And we like to get out and get people that wouldn't be exposed to it and have them realize what, what's available. Mm. 
And that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to um, bring awareness about what you were, like you were making a joke about, hey, it's going to a speakeasy. But we want to help everybody find you because we are also trend enthusiasts. <clears throat> and it's nostalgia, but it's also, like you said, cutting edge. It's like, where do we go? You know? Um, and I uh, remember watching the whole locomotive, like a documentary on how the original, how you got from here all the way to California by rail. So it does have such a rich history and it's interesting to learn about that as well. It def definitely was instrumental in opening up the West. And I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh. So now you know, right? <laughs> I have a love for Union Station. I have a love for trains. Uh, looking forward to spending a lot of time with you. What do you have? <gasps> ah! I'd like to present you with the hat and a whistle. <laughs> oh, Bill and, and Steve, thanks. if you have a little girl. We actually do. Um, this is great. You know who this is going to go to? Yes. Daniela Vaccarelli. She didn't get to go see the train with the boys, no, but then she did not. give that to Daniela. Okay. Um, thank you very, you very much. You're quite welcome. So, Rosanna won't be so mad if I mess up my hair, but <laughs> when I was in high school, um, bib overalls were really in, and I had a pair of Oshkosh Bagash overalls, if I can find a picture. <laughs> so, stay tuned for more. We've been living it up. Uh, any final questions, Lou, that you wanted to no, talk to them about? We're good. Great. Yeah. So, model trains are us, huh? And so, people could join and be a member. Yes, the club is, uh, we have an open membership. Right now we have 84 members. Um, you don't need to have a special interest or a train collection. You could come in, we could run other members' trains. Uh, there, there's a good sharing and community environment there. Um, and uh, it, it's, it, it's about the socialization yeah. and networking through the environment, through our own club as well as other clubs in the whole Northeast. What's also interesting is that it's open 24-7, so all the members... Members have keep. access to the club 24-7. We can go in anytime we want, turn the place on, and run our trains. Right. Okay, I'm going to try to blow on this. I didn't open it all the way. I don't know if the, any sound's going to come out. No. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You're going to have to stay tuned. But you make a great train whistle. Do your train whistle again? <laughs> How about you guys, Bill and Steve? You got a train whistle? All aboard. All aboard. There you go. Stay tuned. we got a great guest coming up next.